Hey everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In a previous episode, I taught basically how to do an assembly edit onto your timeline where you basically get all the uh, shots down into your timeline, kind of the, the the general in and out points of the clips in the order that you're going to be telling the story. And then I mentioned that I would come back and show how to kind of fine tune that from the timeline. What I showed in the previous episode is basically how to open up your footage. And basically this was like double clicking on a clip that you need, setting an in point, out point, and then you hit period to drop it down to the timeline. And by the way, in the description, I have a link to this finished short film. And I also have a link to the previous episode, which is episode 22 that's in this playlist, teaching how to do an assembly edit or an assembly cut on your timeline. So if you want to check those out, check the description below. But now I'm going to be showing you how to do fine tuning changes inside the timeline and move on from an assembly edit to the rough edit. So if we're continuing from that episode 22 here, I'm going to go to the beginning, just kind of start playing through this and show you what we've got. So here we start off with the wide shot, kind of the pan of the entire room here. And as we move along here, it cuts to a shot of the uh, baby monitor. And right here was just intended to be kind of ambient noise playing. This has not been sound mixed yet. We can hear the noise cut in from this, this next clip here. Now we cut to the guy snoring, so we establish the baby monitor kind of playing the, the static noise there. And then here at the end of this clip here, it pans over to the baby monitor and the baby starts crying. Right there you can see it goes loud, and I don't have the sound effects in here yet. That's going to be the next stages of sound mix this. So right there you can see the baby monitor going a little bit as it starts crying, and then here the baby starts crying really loudly. Wow, loud, it cries really, really loudly. And then the dad wakes up here, mm. groans a little bit and wakes up. So, all right, so I'm gonna, as I'm playing through this, the pacing of this seems all cool so far. A couple things that I could do here is I wanna add a dissolve, a cross dissolve between these two edits right here. So as it plays and it cuts to this, that works fine, but I would like a cross dissolve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my arrows up and down to jump between the edits here. And I'm gonna hit arrow up to jump to the edits left and line exactly on that edit right there. And now all I have to do to add a cross dissolve is hit command D, which is control D on a PC. And if I want to make this longer, I can grab the edges. I'm going to stretch it out. If I want to make it an exact duration, like about three seconds, I can double click on this and it opens up this duration and then go three, zero, zero, which is, which is three seconds and zero, zero frames. So three seconds exactly. I'm going to hit OK. And that extended it to three seconds. And I play through this. And that looks nice. And then I want to do another one right here as it dissolves it from the baby monitor to the father sleeping in the bed. So I'm going to arrow down and get to that edit right there. Do the, and actually, I could just what I can do is I want it to be the exact same length. I can select this cross dissolve and hit Command C or Control C on a PC, which is copy. And now that I'm right where my, I want my playhead to be, I'm going to do Command V and it will paste that exact length. And that saves me a little bit of time. So now as it plays through. And now we hear him storing. And there we go. So as I, I'm just going to keep playing through this and find spots where I need to kind of fine tune the edit and make the pacing work out properly and match continuity. Mm. And right here is something I could do to, to pick up the pace a little bit as I move on to this next clip here. That cuts from the baby monitor mm. to him groaning. And we could have that groan start before. If we want to shorten this just a little bit and kind of pick up the pacing a little bit on this. And right here was a little section cut out for uh, for direction from the director. So we've cut out all the audio so we can perform a sound mix later on. But what I want to do is I want to shorten this so the groan goes a little bit from this pre... Uh, I want to hear the groan start here on the baby monitor. And I want to and then cut to him in the bed here. So here is groan and then we cut to him in the bed. Mm. So what I'm going to do here, so if I grab this video here, these two files are linked right there. If I select them, and this used to be linked to this video, but it was it was unlinked because there was a cut that was performed there. So I'm going to zoom up on this plus plus a couple times. And what I want to do is I want to detach that. So one thing you can do is you can hold down option and click on the audio and that selects it separately. I'm going to hit option arrow down and it's going to move my audio down. And then I want to trim this video back a little bit and give, give a little bit of space to move this over. So now I'm going to move all this over so that his audio is underneath this clip of the baby monitor here. So what I need to do is select all tracks forward. Because if I grab this and just start moving it, it's going to push, push other things out of sync down the timeline. So I want to grab everything that's forward. So I'm going to hit the letter A, which selects the all tracks forward tool. You can see it right there. So the letter A selects those. And I'm going to click. And now it has selected that whole section. And I'm going to drag this over to where I want my audio 
position right there. Now you'll notice this video is eating into that as well. So I can do one of two things. I can grab my video and I can roll edit it here. Roll edit is where you change the both in point and out point simultaneously. You shrink one clip's in point while changing the out point of another clip simultaneously. So I can do it this way. I can, uh, I can go over here and select my roll edit or you don't even need that. I like to just have it say on the arrow, arrow key and I move over and this is a trim edit here. But if you hold down command, it automatically changes it to this little double arrow and now I have a roll edit. Now, if I do roll edit this, it's gonna roll edit both the audio and the video. So another shortcut I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down command for the roll tool and option to disconnect the video from the audio. So now I'm holding down command and option that would be control and alt on a PC. So command, option, click, and I'm gonna drag my video here and we're gonna create what is called a J cut where the audio from the next clip extends over into the uh, into the visual of this clip and it, and it forms the shape of an L moving that audio over to the left like this. And now you'll hear his, mo his groan before it cuts away from the baby monitor. Mm. And I like that because you hear him start to groan and then it cuts to him still groaning when, it, when it's on his bed. I'm gonna just trim this over a couple more frames here, maybe like three or four frames. That's about seven frames right there. And I'm gonna drop it right there. So it stays on the baby monitor a little bit longer. Let's listen to that. Mm. I like that because then you hear a moan when it's still on the baby monitor and then it cuts back to him while he's breathing. So I like that. The timing on that turned out nice. So that's a roll edit right there. So I'm gonna forward through this a little bit more where he sits up, puts on his slippers, rubs his eyes. All right. And he says, all right, to the baby, like, I'm coming, I'm coming, sort of thing. And then all of a sudden, he hears his wife's voice singing over the baby monitor, like his wife's already gotten up and is helping him, helping the baby. So so when he hears that through the baby monitor, he looks down. And here's an unintentional mismatch right there, because I was just, like, dropping footage down, the approximate footage that I wanted to tell the story uh, here. And here we've got a little bit of a mismatch, well, a big mismatch, actually. He looks down, he looks down again, so I'll repeat. So this is a really cool tool that I'm going to show where you're going to be using the ripple tool to match and then the roll edit to decide where you want your edit to happen. So ripple editing is great for matching. So what we can do here is I can arrow down, land on this edit right here. I can move my mouse over this. I've got my uh, selection tool still selected. You can go up and select ripple tool if you wish. I don't do that because I like doing it with a shortcut by holding down command. If I hold, If I move my mouse over this, an arrow to the left. Right now it's red. I'm not holding down command or control on a PC, but if you now hit down, hit command, it turns that arrow yellow, and now this is a ripple tool. Otherwise, this is just a trim tool, and I just trim the out point without touching anything else. So I'm going to hold down command, and get it. if you get it in the middle, that's a roll edit while I'm holding down com command or control. While I'm holding down command on a Mac and then control on a PC. So I move this to the left. Now it's a ripple tool, and I'm going to edit this clip's out point without it touching this adjacent clip's in point. And then when you let go, it will ripple everything down the timeline to compensate for the uh, the additional frames that you either add or get rid of. So watch this. If I hold down command and I drag it to the right and extend it, wait, now you see up there in the top window there, you see in the left-hand frame, he, I'm extending this and he looks back up and kind of smiles and says, thank you, honey. Thank you, honey, right there. I, I, I want to match this. So if I drag it back the other direction, it trims it down. But now watch what happens when I let go. I'm going to extend it, push out, and everything on the timeline moves down to the right. And this endpoint stays the same. I'm gonna undo that, Command Z or Control Z on a PC. And, I, and I, let's do it the opposite direction. I'll drag it to the left and drop and everything is pulled down the timeline. So I just shrunk this out, clip's out point and then everything got pulled down. I haven't matched this yet though. I like to turn off the snap function up here because if I'm trying to do this just by a couple of frames here, it keeps snapping to the end of the playhead. Uh, so I'm just gonna hit the letter S. Watch this when I hit S, it turns that off. S is gone, or you just go click on this either way. So if I'm not, my mouse is not over there, I can just hit S, it turns that off, and now it's not going to snap those frames. It's not going to snap to the edge of this. Every time it gets close to the play, it's not going to snap to it. So I'm going to hold down Command on a Mac, Control on a PC, turn this arrow, left arrow yellow, and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to uh, get this timing set up. I'm just going to do it right where he starts barely moving his face. That's all be a good matching point. Right there, just maybe like three or four frames, just barely moves his face. Right there, I'm going to use that as my matching point. Just barely starts to move his face right there. So now this is still mismatched, but now it cuts off right when he starts to barely hit it, turn his face. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this clip, to the clip to the right. And I'm going to trim that to get it matched on that matching point. Keep in mind, this was shot with one single camera and the camera moved from one uh, setup to the next, from one location to the next. 
from this shot here, and then it was moved over to his side to show this uh, tilt down to the baby monitor, then tilt back up to his face, where he says, Thank you, honey. So I'm going to get it uh, right. I'm going to get to this clip right here. Hold down command on a Mac, control on a PC, grab this, and I'm going to drag it to the right until, look at this, I'm going to get it just where his face moves, about four frames. He moves it to the uh, to his right, and now I'm going to let go of the mouse, and now I can let go of control as well. Now I can let com go of command as well. That's what I kind of emphasize there is you hold down c command or control, get it where you want to with your mouse, then let go on the mouse first, then let go of command or control. Let's look through this. I'm going to arrow through this frame by frame here. Get to the beginning here, and I'm going to arrow through frame by frame and see if this matches. He starts to turn his head, and that looks like it matches. Let's play through it and see if it looks natural. Okay, once I've got that matched, and that looks like a really good match, uh, now I can do a roll edit. If I don't like where the edit happens, I kind of do like where the edit happens, but if I want to change the timing on the edit, I can do this. I can move over this edit, hold down command again, get it right in the middle. This is a roll edit. Now what a roll edit does, so I'm holding down command, it would be control on a PC, I keep saying that over and over again, but if you get your mouse and click on this and while you're holding down command or control and drag it to the left, look at, up at these images at the top. It's moving these things in sync as if it was shot with uh, two cameras. And the timing on his, the head turn looks pretty good. It's about a, the exact same speed. Let's say I want to cut from this shot just a little bit later. I'm going to try a little bit later and a little bit sooner and see what looks better. So hold down command, drag this to the right. This is a little bit later. And I don't want to get the camera to get too far away from his face, maybe right about there. Let's see what that looks like. I trimmed it over. It should still match. And I don't like that because we're not seeing his face very much. So I'm going to undo Command Z or Control Z on a PC. I'm going to hold down Command, select this edit as a roll edit, and trim it backwards. And I'm just going to let it play it. Let maybe start like right here where he opens his eyes and before he looks down. I'm going to do it before he looks down. Let's see how that looks. All right. And see, I think I liked it where I had it before. So I'm going to undo that. And I like that. I think I'm going to leave it right there. Now, I hear some voice from the director directing there. So what I could do is I could be friendly to the person who's going to be doing the sound mix. Now I want to do what would be called an L cut as opposed to a J cut. The J cut had the audio from this clip extending over to this one. And now an L cut will have the audio from this clip extending over to this one. I'm going to hold down Command and Option, which would be Control and Alt on a PC. And I'm going to click on this. That detaches the audio. The command turns it into a roll edit. The option unlinks the audio from the video. And now I can drag this to the right. I'm going to get right past the direction from the director. Let go. And now we got some uh, more just ambient noise there. Let's see if that works. Now the director's commentary is gone. And we've got what is called an L cut. All right. So let's play through this a little bit more here and listen. Thank you, honey. Says, thank you, honey. And he goes to lay down. And here's where it's, it's a little bit more subtle, but his head starts to move. And then his head starts to move again. Let me show a different way of doing this. We can do the ripple edit to match again if we want to. But if you just know right exact, exactly where you want to cut this off as he starts to lean his head down. And here his head is already leaning down. Here it's a little bit out of focus. So I'm going to get it right when he just barely starts to move his head. So what I can do is get it right on the frame where I want to cut. Right there his head starts to rock. And I want to get rid of these excess frames. Let me zoom up plus plus. I want to get rid of these S excess frames from here to here. Another way you can do that is you can use Q and W. What Q does is it, it will ripple delete to your left of the playhead. And W will uh, ripple delete to the right. And those are right next to each other. On the keyboard, the Q is to the left on, and the W is just to the right of the Q. So that's kind of easy to remember. But Q and W, W will do this basically. So let, let me do this. I'm going to go up here and cut with the blade. And we're going to slice that. I'm going to turn my snap back on. So the letter S to turn my snap back on. Move my blade down here over the top of this. Get it so it uh, magnetizes to that. Go click on my mouse and cut it. Hit V for my arrow tool. Select this footage that I want to delete. Hit delete. Select the gap and hit delete. And now I'm finished with the edit there. Uh, I'm going to undo that. Undo, undo, undo. And now the quick way of doing that, the same thing happens when you just hit W. It eliminates to the right and then it ripple deletes. Watch this. W. It's dead. So now we play through this, and the hand looks like it kind of matches, maybe a little too much on this side right here. I can select my ripple editing tool by hitting the letter B, move it down here, get it right on this edit right here, or I can do the command or control trick as well. But right here, I'm just going to grab the edge here, 
And I'm going to move this back and forth and see. And I'm going to turn my snap off. It's snapping to the playhead. So turn my snap off again. And I grab this and I'm going to trim it to the left a little bit and get it to where he just barely starts to move his head. Right there, he's barely moving his head. Let's see if that matches up right there. So I only changed that by a couple frames. Let's see how this looks. And now I can do the roll edit if I want to. I can hold command and decide where I want that edit to happen now that I've got it kind of matched there. And see, he's moving his body in sync. Let's say right before his face goes out of focus, right there. So it's leaning, but his face hasn't got quite out of focus. Let's try that. And that matches the audio doesn't. If I want to smooth out the audio there so it sounds a little more consistent, I can arrow up, land right on the edit to the left. Arrow down lands on edits to the right. Arrow up lands on edits to the le left. Instead of Command D, which does a cross dissolve, I don't want that there. You can hit Command Shift D, and it does a crossfade. There's another way of doing this. This is a new that's a newer feature in Premiere. Let me show you. But now let's play through that and see how that sounds. That sounds a lot smoother, and I can extend this if I want, make it a little bit longer. And that's very very smooth. Now it sounds very smooth through there. Another way of doing that, let me undo. This is kind of a new feature in Premiere. You can grab, if I grab this node or this node and drag it into the other clip, it doesn't matter which node I grab. If it's this one, you drag it to the left. If it's this one, you grab it to the, and drag it to the right. And we can extend this and make it however long we want. That's kind of a newer feature in Premiere that's really nice and convenient. I really like that. All right, guys. Well, that's some tips just for uh, fine-tuning your edit while you're on your timeline. In a future episode, I'm going to be showing you guys once you're finished and you got your what's called your working cut. After you get a rough cut and you start moving on to the working cut, uh, rough cut is something you usually to show to the director. Then the director will give you some notes on some changes, and oftentimes we'll come into an editor bay and sit down with you and, and have you do some changes. But once you get what's called a working cut, that's where you can basically send this off to be sound mixed and color graded. And then after the color graded and the sound mix comes back, you work on a final cut. But that's it for this episode. In the future, I will be going over sound mixing on this project and a few other things as well and color grading. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. And I hope to see you in future episodes. And thank you for watching ChinFat.